Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to have some fun. We're going to see how to make a flashcard program in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Rosa in Athens, Georgia, one of my Platinum members. Rosa says, any chance you could show us how to make a flashcard program? I teach third grade and it would be really cool to show the kids. Well, yes, of course, Rosa, you're a Platinum member, so anything goes. Plus, I love doing things for the kids. So let's have a little fun and let's make some flashcards. Now, before we get started, there's a couple videos I want you to watch first. First thing, watch my blank template video that'll explain how I build my blank template, the database we're gonna use to start this project with. So I want you to understand all that stuff, including my status box that I build in that database. So go watch that if you haven't already. Next, in order to randomize the flashcards, we need to learn how to generate random numbers. So go watch that video. Then we'll need to know how to use the DLOOKUP function to look up one of the cards from the deck, right, from the table. And to put all this stuff together, we're gonna to use a little bit of VBA. Not a lot, not a ton. I'll walk you through all the, the things that you need. Maybe a handful of lines of code, okay? But you go watch my intro to VBA class if you haven't yet already. Don't let VBA scare you. This is a free video. These are all free videos that I recommended so far. All right, this one's about 20 minutes long, teaches you everything you need to know to get started programming in VBA. So go watch this right now if you haven't yet, because we will need a little bit of VBA to build flashcards. You will find links to all of these videos down below in the description below the video window. So go click on that, go find them, go watch them, go do that, come back. Okay? Okay. All right? So right. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free download off my website. It's not exactly the same as what I ended up with it being in the, uh, the blank video. I had, there's two more videos after that one. There's contacts and there's invoicing. So there's extra stuff in here that you don't necessarily need for this video. But go ahead and watch those if you want to as well. Those are free as well. So the first thing we need is a table to store our flashcards, our questions, and our answers. So let's go to Create, Table Design. We don't need the property sheet. We'll get a flashcard ID. That's our auto number. We'll do a question, short text, and an answer. Also short text. If you want to make the question long text, that's fine. If you want to have questions that are more than 255 characters, uh, and you're getting pretty crazy, but it all, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. Now we're going to make this flashcard where the user just types in the answer. Okay. So they got to type it in exactly as it appears in the table, which is good for spelling and vocabulary and things like that. Um, if not, they'll have, just have to learn what the right spellings are for some of these words. Uh, we'll do a multiple choice flashcard in the extended cut with the members. All right. But for now, for the, for the basic video, we're going to do, you have to type in the answer exactly. So let's save this as flash card. T, my flashcard table, primary key, yup. And let's go ahead and put some data in here. Let's do some Star Trek questions. How's that sound? Because I am a big Trekkie. Okay, and I just typed in some questions. I'm not gonna make you sit here watching me type them all in. All right, so I got some basic questions, five questions, and then five simple answers. Okay. Now, if you want to go ahead and make yourself a pretty little data entry form for this so your users can type in new questions and answers, that's fine. That's up to you. That's real simple to do. That could be something along the lines of like my, my continuous form customer list here. We got the question and the answer next to each other. I've already done this in a million videos. I'm not going to do it again. So let's move on to the query that we're going to use to generate random flashcards. Now, you watched my random numbers video, as I told you to. So you know that we can use a random number to sort a list of items. Then all we have to do is pick off the top one. Okay, so let's make a query, create, query design. I'm gonna bring in my flashcard table and bring in the star. So you got everybody down here. Everyone's coming to the party, right? And then right here, we're going to put a random number that we're going to use to sort this list. What's it gonna be? X colon, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this better. Shift F2, X colon. Okay, just to create me a number called X, make it RND, random number, from the flash card ID times the current timer interval value, right? The timer value times minus one. What does all that mean? I explained it in detail in the random number video. Go watch it. But basically, this just gives us a random number, and I would run this now. You can see over here, we've got our random number, right? Random number from zero to one. 
And all we have to do is sort based on this value. And I'm going to save this as my flashcard queue, a flashcard query. Every time this query runs, a different value will be sorted at the top. See, number two. Oh, number two again. It's, you're going to get some duplicates with only five entries. See, number three. Number two again, same. Number four, and so on. So now we have a way of generating a random flashcard. So now, in our form that we're going to use to actually take the flashcard quiz, to actually right, have the flashcards run by us, all we have to do is just pick off the number one record from this query, because the query will run, it will sort the records, and we just get that. And we compare the question to the answer. Okay, you with me so far? All right, everybody good? Okay, now, to actually take the flashcard quiz, we're going to use an unbound form, kind of like my main menu here is not bound to anything. It doesn't have any data in it. There's no table or query that it's bound to. We'll do the same thing with the flashcard form. And we'll, with, with our VBA code, we'll just read a value from the query, right? And then we'll display it on the form, get the user's input, and then process what they type in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this main menu. So we're going to go main, or let's go, yeah, let's use the main menu. Okay, I was thinking we have a, a blank one up here, but we'll just use this guy. Copy, paste, control C, control V. We'll call this my flashcard F, my flashcard form. Okay, let's design this guy. Now, right away, I'm going to change the color so I don't get this confused. Let's get rid of main menu. We'll get rid of this. We'll get rid of this. Okay, I'll get rid of my branding. That's fine. Uh, let's keep this guy around. Let's change this color. Maybe go, uh, let's say, uh, maybe that blue. Eh, a little darker. Let's go a little darker. Let's go to that one. All right, that one looks good. Okay. We'll need boxes for our question and for our answer. So this will be the question box. Uh, let's copy, paste. And uh, actually, before we do that, let's go in here and change some of the properties. Let's do, um, okay, this one's going to be called question. And the control source, we're going to delete that. We're taking the date out of there. And the format, we'll delete that too. Okay, and this will be the question. And we'll make another one called answer. Copy, paste. All right, this guy will be answer. All right, and uh, I'm going to get rid of the label for the question box. We're going to move this up top here and make it nice and big. So the question is real big across the top of the form. So let's go with uh, light blue, maybe like that. Now let's go lighter blue. Let's go with uh, let's go with this one. Yeah, and we'll make it like 16 point. All right, that's where our question's going to go. Okay. And then the answer will be right below it that you'll type in, which the answers aren't very big. So answer, whoops, answer. Okay. We're going to use this as our submit button that the user will submit their answer with, right? Submit. And maybe make that text a little bigger on that too. There we go. And I'm going to make this button the default button. What does that mean? Well, the default button, there's a property for buttons called default. If you set that to yes, what happens is when you press enter anywhere on this form, it pushes that button. That's the default button. Cancel is another property, and that's if you hit the escape key. That's good for like closing a form. But what I want to do is I want to type in the answer and press enter, and then it processes my, my response. Okay? We'll keep the status box. You remember the status box from the blank template video? We're going to put, we'll have stuff going by in there, like, you know, correct, wrong, the correct answer was, that kind of stuff. That's like, basically like our output window. I don't like using message box all the time. And then we'll need to keep track of some stats down below, how many questions they've answered total, how many they've answered correctly, and then a score. So let's copy this guy, copy, paste, slide down here. This will be answered, how many they've answered in total. Basically a counter, right? All right, slide down like this. Number of questions answered. The number correct. All right, correct. And then their score. Score. All right, and let's give these names. This one here will be answered. Whoops, answered. This one will be Correct. We don't use text 22, right? We give our controls good names, and this one will be score. We're never going to score. Okay. 
All right, looks good, right? It's solid design, looking good. Let's save it. I'm going to just close it and open it up again. Let's go back to our main menu. Let's make this button here open up that form. Design view. Okay. And in this Hello World button, we're going to call this flashcards. Okay. Right click, build event. That's going to bring up your VBA editor. You went through intro to VBA, so you know what this is, right? Okay. Right down here is my Hello World button. We're going to do command, open form. Flash card F. That's it. That's all you got to do to open a form up. You don't need all those other parameters all the time. All right. Here we go. Flashcards. Boom. There's my flashcards. All right. Now, the form's all set, right? Our question will go here. Our answer will go, be typed in here. We'll hit submit. We'll get results down here. And then our score will be calculated. Now comes the fun part. The form's already built. All right, I got it laid out just the way I want it. And I'll be honest with you, most of the time, that's what I do. I lay the form out the way I want it to look, whether I'm doing a customer database or order entry or vehicle maintenance or something fun like this. I usually lay the form out. First, sometimes I'll draw it out on paper to get an idea of what I want, especially back in my consulting days when I was working with a client. I would sketch everything up either on paper or I'd do it like in paint and say, this is what it's going to look like. Is this okay? Get them to sign off on it first. Because you don't, there's nothing worse than designing an interface, and they're like, well, we don't like it, and we want it to do this, and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Anyways. Oh, let's change our form caption real quick. Hang on. Design view. Let's come over here. And change the caption to flesh cards by access learning. Zone, every time I hit say the word flash, I think of that Flash Gordon song from Queen. Flash. Ah. Remember that? Are you guys as old as me? Okay. Let's go into the code for this guy here. I'm going to just right click on this button. Actually, let's rename this button first. Double click on it. Instead of hello world button, let's call this my submit button. It's kind of like a web form, right? Submit. Right click, build event. All right. We don't need a lot of the stuff on here. We can get rid of all of this code because we don't have those buttons anymore. We deleted them. All we really need is we need the status stuff and we need the submit button click. Okay. Now, the first thing we want to happen is when the form loads up, we want to blank the score, right? We're going to set these all to zero and then get the first question. Okay, so let's find the form properties, go to event, go to either on load or on open. In this case, it doesn't matter. There's on load, there's on open. On load is easier to find. It's right there. All right, form load. This is what's going to happen when the form loads up. We're going to say answered equals zero. Correct equals zero and score equals zero all right blank the score okay if you want to make the user a button on the form to restart the you know the test blank the score and start from zero that's up to you i'll just tell them just close the form and reopen it do whatever you want it's your database okay now when the form opens up i want to get a question so let's make a subroutine of our own called get question what is that well we're going to come right up here right above this sub and make our own private sub private means only this form can call it it's a subroutine as opposed to a function it's not going to return a value it's just going to do something and we're going to call it get question okay so this will now run and pass execution up to this guy and the reason why i'm doing that is because we want to be able to call this get question from multiple places right when i click that submit button i'm also going to get another question I'm going to process the response and get the next question. Okay, so what's get question going to do? Well, get question is going to basically go out to this query. Where are we? The, the flashcard query. It's going to say, hello, flashcard query. Give me the ID of your first record. Okay, so look up the flashcard ID for that first record. It's going to return a three this time, right? Next time it runs, it's going to return a four and it's always going to be random okay once i have that id then i can delook up the question and the answer values and then let the user type them in so basically just grab that first record okay and this this doing it this way saves a whole lot of programming in here with trying to figure out how many records there are and then counting up to that one and blah 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 this is the easiest method i can think of okay now we're going to need some variables some local variables We'll need a variable to store that ID in. We'll need to store the answer and the question from the table so I can compare them later. Now, there's a couple of different ways you could do this. 
you could make these hidden form fields if you wanted to. You could hide, you know, make some little invisible fields right here and store these values there. Or you could just make a form level variable. All right, I cover this in my developer classes. Normally, you'd dim a variable in here. You'd say dim uh, ID as a long. We're going to look up the, the ID, right? Q as a string. We don't want to call it question because we already have a field called question, right? And then A as a string as well. But if I declare them here, only this sub can use them. I can't check these values anywhere else, like in my submit button code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these variables and I'm going to declare them out here. Okay, these are now, I changed their scope. This is, these are now form level variables. They'll stay active and keep their values as long as this form is open. Okay, see how that works? Now I can come in here and get those values. I can say ID equals D lookup flashcard ID from the flashcard Q. Now, normally with the lookup, you'd say some kind of criteria where like ID equals 12 or whatever. But if you, if you don't do that, if you ignore that, don't give it a criteria. All right. Because notice criteria is in brackets there. That means it's optional. You don't need it. If you don't specify it, that's just going to return the first record. Technically, it's going to go out and return any random record, but you, you can't always rely on that. It's usually the first record. Okay. Now, that's going to go out and grab the first record, which we've made sure is a random record, because every time that DLOOKUP function runs, it's going to rerun that query. So now I have a random ID for a flashcard. Now I'll just go and get the question and answer from that record. Q equals DLOOKUP, and this is why I wanted you to watch that DLOOKUP video first, right? Look up the question from the flashcard table. You can get it from the query, but the table's faster. Because the query's got to run all that stuff and sort those records. Just go right to, straight to the table at this point, right? Where the flash card ID equals the ID that we just looked up a second ago. See how that works? And then we'll do the same thing with the answer. All right, we'll change this to A, change this to answer. All right, so now in memory, now in the computer's memory, in a variable, I've got the ID, the question, and the answer. Okay, so let's put that question on the form question that's my form field equals q all right i set the form field question equal to the q that i just looked up we're going to hang on to a for now we don't use a just yet but i need it we're gonna need it later right okay let's let's set the field form blank though so answer equals blank let's set it to an empty string that way the user can right just uh type type in whatever they want otherwise it might see the the answer from the last time you ran it Okay, and while we're at it, let's do answer dot set focus. What's that going to do? That's going to put the cursor on the answer field. So I'm ready to type in without having to click and do other stuff. Okay, let's save it and let's see what we got so far. All right, when the form opens, it should blank my score and get the first question. I put the focus on the answer form field, answer field. Okay, ready? Let's close this form, open it up, and look at that. Right? It blanked the score and the answer incorrect, right? Got a question and put the focus right there for the answer. Let's close it and do it again. See? It's Box Father's name. Right? Let's box. See, you're going to get some repeats with only five questions in here. All right? What's the name of the device that allows Dory to see? Okay. Now, what happens at this point is if I type in something and hit enter, nothing happens because we don't have any code in our submit button. So, guess what's next? The code for the submit button. Let's go back over to our code here. We've already got the submit button click right there. Whoops. Come here. Okay. All right. First thing, they've answered a question, right? Whether it's right or wrong, they've answered one. So answered equals answered plus one. All right. You answered a question. So increase the counter. Now we got to check to see if um, they answered correctly. So if answer... Well, they typed in equals A, which is what we looked up, then they answered correctly, right? So we'll status, this we're using our little status output window, right? Question, I'll put the counter in here, answered, right? And then we'll go colon, correct, right? It's going to say question one, correct, question two, correct, whatever that counter is that we're incrementing. And then we'll say correct. 
equals correct plus 1. Add 1 to the correct. Otherwise, they answered incorrectly. All right, so I'm going to copy this line here. And we're going to say wrong. Wrong. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, I have another video where I teach you how to play a sound. Right? You could have it go boom and play some kind of sound effect there if you want to. Um, <laughs> and then we'll say uh, status. We'll tell them what the correct answer is. This is up to you. If you want to, if you want to make this a learning experience, right? Teach them what they answered wrong. The correct answer is, and we happen to know what it is, right? A. And if. So that there will tell them whether they're right or wrong. Let's update the score. Score equals correct divided by answered. Now, normally you got to watch for divide by zero errors here, but we're, at this point we can always be guaranteed that answered is at least one, unless they manually go in and change those those scores. If you want to prevent that, if you want, if you're going to like have your students run this on their own, you want to prevent them from messing with stuff. Just take each one of these boxes and lock them. Go to data, locked is yes. Now you can't type in those values yourself, and I like to take locked values and make them just slightly different color, like a gray. All right, that way now the user knows only they can type there. Okay, yeah, you can lock this too if you want to. Lock it and lock this if you want. All right, now the only thing that the user can type on is that. All right, that's going overboard, but there's little things you can do. See, now if I come down here, I can't change my score. Okay. And then, once we update the score, we've, we've told them whether they're right or wrong. We told them what the wrong answer is, what the right answer is, if they answered it wrong. Update the score. Now, reset everything and get the next question. So, get question. That's why I want to make that its own subroutine. That will then pass up to here. Look up the next value. Display the question. Blank the answer field. Set focus on the answer. And you're ready to go. And that is all the code we really need to do this. This plus the query. And, of course, the properly designed form. Right? Not that hard. Right? What do we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 10. Uh, what? Less than 20 lines of code to do this. Not hard at all. Okay? So, here we go. Flashcards. What was Spock's father's name? Sarek. Enter. All right. Correct. What is the omnipotent alien in the first Next Generation episode? That was Q. Enter. See? What was Spock's father's name? You're going to get some repeats. I've only got five questions in here. It's going to repeat a lot. Let's say I type it in wrong. Jim. Right? Wrong. The correct answer is Sarek. And yes, the status box goes backwards. That's just, you know. You can, if you want to, if you want to have it uh, blank that every time, just come into the status box text. And instead of saying status box equals S and VB new line and status box, just get rid of the uh, and status box in the end, and it will just display what you send it. However, you'll have to put this together in one call because this will, this one will overwrite that one and, and blank it. Okay. Or, or, or if you want to just come down here and say status box equals blank. So every time you hit submit, it blanks it and then gives you your results. That's another way you could look at it. Right. So I can come in here and say, okay. What's the name of the device? It's the visor. Enter, right? Question four, correct. Then we got Q again, right? Question five, correct. What's Spock's father's name? Let's put in Jim again, right? Question six, wrong. The correct answer is Sarek, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And uh, as far as capitalization goes, no, that's not important. Uh, upper versus lowercase. That is decided by uh, this guy, option compare database. Okay. That is what says that, hey, we're just going to check, uh, you know, upper, lowercase doesn't matter. Right, capital A, lowercase a, that you're fine. There's options for that. I teach that in my other classes. So there you go. There's your real basic flashcard program. If you want to learn more in the extended cut for the members, we're going to turn this flashcard database into a multiple choice database. Okay, or like my, uh, my high school math teacher used to say, multiple guess. Okay. And um, rather than having to set up each flashcard where you have one right answer and then, the, you know, you have to put in the three wrong answers or however many you want, we're going to get the wrong answers from the list of other answers in the table. It makes it a whole lot easier to set up. And really, you just want repetition so that you get the stuff if you're studying with flashcards, right? So we'll just get the wrong answers from the other cards. So to do that, we'll have to learn a record set loop so we can loop through the, the, uh, the cards and get the right things. A little more VBA in this one. All right, this one isn't for the faint of heart. But if you like the more advanced stuff, this is a great uh, extra little programming lesson. And there's a lot of debugging in this one because there's a couple mistakes and I left them in the video. Some people complain about it. A lot of people like it. So 
you know, I'm going off the top of my head to make some little adjustments and, and some stuff I didn't plan ahead of time, and there's some bugs, and I, I endless loop in one of them, and I'm like, what? Let's figure it out. So I'll teach you debugging. We'll set up breakpoints and watches, and we'll loop through the variables with the code. We'll step through it. This one's 40 minutes long. It's a, it's a good one, but, um, you know, yeah, you'll, learn, you'll learn some extra VBA if you want. It's uh, for the members, Extended Cut. Silver members and up get access to all the videos, the Extended Cut videos. Gold members can download these databases, and you get access to my Code Vault with lots of extra cool stuff on my website. Plus, you guys, uh, members also get one free class from my class collection. Every month, you get a free one. Silver members get a beginner class. Uh, gold members can get up to an expert class. You got to take them in order. I don't like you skip around. You got to take them in order. And then, of course, platinum members can get up to the developer level. So there's lots of learning. Just become a member. Right? Sign up today. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.